All right, well, to do this homework, the trick is you've got to find the net velocity, which usually is going to involve either adding or subtracting, depending on the direction of the two uh, velocity vectors involved. And when we do that, we're just going to use this equation. Uh, let's see, let me get my... So we're going to use this equation that the average velocity is going to equal the change in position divided by time. So let's try the first one. I have a homing pigeon. I uh, can fly through the still air at 21. So I'm going to have it go this way at 21. But the wind is blowing it backwards at 8.2. So since they're working against each other, I'm going to subtract. And 21 minus 8.2 gives me a net velocity of 12.8. So what we're going to do on this one here is instead of the average, let's today just think of it as the net velocity. And that means the velocity that you have when you consider all the different uh, vectors. So in this case, that's miles per hour. Miles per hour. So what I have to do now is, the question is, uh, how far away? So how far away is a position? So I'm solving for position. So I'm going to take the velocity, and I'm going to say... 12.8 equals 3.3 over delta x. I'm going to solve for delta x, and when I solve for delta x, I'm basically what I have to do is I have to multiply both sides by 3.3 times 3.3. So 12.8 times 3.3, that means that delta x equals, that's a terrible, equals 42 miles away. Police car is 2.3 kilometers behind the bad guy's car, but the bad guy is going 43 meters per second, and the good guy is going 51. So now we have a chasing problem. So we have one car is going this way at uh, 43, and it's being chased by another one that's going 51. Now, really, what we think about here is when you have these, these independent objects moving, in that case, when they're chasing each other, you're going to subtract. Because the motion of this one, by driving away from this one, is slowing down the rate at which they're coming together. So to find the net velocity, I'm just going to say 51 minus 43, and that gives me a net velocity of 8 meters per second. So that's so we use that net velocity right here. And the question is how long, so I'm looking for time. So I'm going to say uh, 8 meters per second equals time. And I can't use a distance in kilometers, so I'm going to convert kilometers to meters. So 2.3 kilometers is the same thing as 2,300 meters. Now I've got to get uh, t out from under the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by t. In other words, I'm going to do the swap. These two are going to swap places. So I'm going to get is t equals 2300 divided by 8. And what that gives me is, what does that give me here? I believe it gives me 290 seconds until the police car catches them. All right, next one. I want the bottom of a 12 meter long. Oops, what was that? The bottom of a 12 meter long stairway. Uh, it's moving down at this. I'm moving up at this. What is my velocity relative to the ground? Now the ground is not moving with me, so I have to take into account both motions. In that case, the uh, uh, I run up five meters, but the escalator carries me down in the opposite direction. Give me two point four. So my net velocity, my V net, is going to equal 2.6 meters per second. That's my velocity relative to the ground, 2.6 meters per second. How long will it take me to reach the top of the stairs? Now I'm looking for time, so I'm going to say, how long are the stairs? They're 12 meters, so I'm going to say, uh, uh, for this one here, I'll say, 2.6 equals t over 5 meters. 
that right? No, equals 12 meters. I gotta get t by itself, so we're gonna swap these values. These two are gonna swap. So what I'm gonna get is t equals 12 divided by 2.6. And 12 divided by 2.6 uh, is 4.6. 4.6 seconds. What is my velocity relative to the $100 bill? Well, now the $100 bill is moving with me on the escalator. So if you have two objects on the same moving frame of reference, my advice to you is to ignore the motion of the frame of reference. Like if you and I are on the same ferry, and a ferry is moving or not, it doesn't matter. It'll take the same amount of time to walk from one end to the other, whether it's moving or not. So you can ignore its motion. You and I are on the same moving Earth, so we ignore the motion of the Earth. So therefore, I'll simply ignore the motion of the escalator. I don't care about this. What matters is I'm moving up this fast. So the answer in this case is going to be 5 meters per second. Uh, how long will it take me to reach the money? Now, the money is 11 meters away. So I'll say, oh yeah, sorry about that. So I'll say 5 equals 11 over t. I'm going to do the swap to get the variable out from under the denominator. And that's going to give me t equals 11 over 5. And I divide 11 by 5, I'm going to come up with 2.2 seconds. Well, let's try this now. All right, now let's move up here. Number four, a person in a backward truck is going 32. Throws the ball the other way. So I'm going to start arrows. Here's the truck and the person in it. And that's 32. Now a ball goes the opposite direction at 45. So in this case, the motion of the truck is working against the motion of the ball. So I'm going to subtract. I'm going to say 45 minus 32. I'm going to say 45 minus 32. I get the net velocity of the ball. <sighs> Man, sorry about that. That's not what it is either. It's. Uh, it's 13 meters per second. The question is, how long will it take the ball to reach the pitcher? So I'm going to say this equals uh, 15 meters over time. And I'm going to do that swap that I've been doing so much of. And what that's going to give me is t equals 15 divided by uh, let's see, divided by 13. And 15 divided by 13 is 1.2. 1 1.2 1 .2 seconds. Alright, well, I'm going to draw a picture for number 5. So I have a jet fighter. Whoops. I have a jet fighter. Look at that jet fighter. And it's flying to the east. And it's flying east at a velocity of 301 meters per second. Now, the bullets in the airplane are traveling east with the airplane right now at 301. That's the thing to remember. When it pulls the trigger, bullet A goes eastward also. And it has an additional 230. Whereas bullet B tries to go the opposite way. So let's think of this now. It often helps with vectors to think of right as being the positive direction and left as the negative direction. I'm going to make this. It's flying at negative 230 is what its velocity is. So therefore, what I have is bullet A has a velocity of 531 meters per second east. Whereas bullet B has a velocity of 71 meters per second. And you may be surprised to realize that because the eastward vector is larger than the westward vector, that, that the, the velocity vector for, for bullet B is still in the same direction. It's also eastward. Both bullets are traveling this way. Alright, let's take a look at this next one. Alright, let's make it a little bit bigger. Alright, 
So we're going to have to draw a picture of this in order to understand it, I think. So what we've got is a person paddles their kayak northward for six. It would be better if I had graph paper, but I don't. They're going to go northward for six meters, uh, at, north, at six meters per second. The wind is going to blow it westward, so at five meters per second. And then the current moves the kite backwards at 9 meters per second. Alright, now what we need to do is we need to come up with a resultant vector. So I start where I started and I end where I ended. Alright, and it says, what is the paddler's net velocity? So if I'm going to find the magnitude of it, I'm going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, the we have a x component of 5 and we have a y component of 6 minus 9, that's 3. So to find that, I'm going to say the square root, to find the resultant, I'm going to take the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. And that's going to equal my resultant vector. Hang on a second, I'm going to grab my calculator. And the answer is 5.8 meters per second. So 5.8 meters per second. That is its so 5.8 meters per second. And the direction we're going to call is southwest. Maybe later we'll learn how to calculate the actual angle, but that'll work. How far from the starting point is a kayaker going to be in 28 seconds? Well, now I just use of velocity equals delta x over t. So I know that the kayaker has a velocity of 5.8. I'm looking for the change in position. And I know that it is a 26 second trip. So what I do is I have to multiply both sides by 26. So my answer is going to be, oops, 26. Well, the answer is going to be 5.8 times 26. Let's just see what that is. 5.8 times 26. Looks like it's 150.8. I'm going to call it 100. Well, I'll just write that down. Uh, it's 100. I'll call it 151 meters equals uh, the change in position. Okay, I'm going to try to draw a picture of this and just understand I'm a much better artist than this. It's just hard to draw it this way. So what I've got is a fair... Oh, darn. <laughs> what I've got is a ferry boat and the ferry boat is moving away from the dock at uh, 5 meters per second I'm not going to write the meters per second, I know what on my paper the bicycle is going this way at 6 meters per second, now I have a person on the dock, now remember this dock is fixed to the earth All right? the dock is not moving whereas the ferry is. Okay, so the person on the dock takes a radar gun and points it at the boat. And so we want to know is, how fast does the radar gun say? Well, since the radar gun is not moving with the boat, the radar gun is going to notice both the motion of the boat and the motion of the bicycle. And since they're going in the same direction, both the boat and the bicycle uh, carry the bicycle away from the radar gun. So I'm going to add these two together and what I'll get is 11 meters per second west, well, we'll just say away. Right. How fast uh, is the person on the bike approaching the espresso stand on the front of the boat? Let me go ahead and draw that. So here's, whoops, so here's the front of the boat. It turns out whether the boat is moving or not doesn't matter. Think about yourself on a ferry. If you're walking on the ferry, if you didn't know the ferry left the dock, you wouldn't know it left the dock. I mean, you would feel the same on the inside. So, in other words, when you're on a mo when two objects in question are on the same moving thing, in this case, the ferry boat, you ignore the motion of the ferry boat. You and I are on the same moving earth, we ignore the motion of the earth. So, in this case, this doesn't matter. All all the bicycle is going to all all we know is that the bicycle is approaching the front of it at six meters per second, regardless of the motion of the boat. How much will our distance from the radar gun change in five seconds? Well, the, from, uh, 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 
<laughs> from the radar gun, she's moving 11 meters per second. So to solve this, I would have to say 11 meters per second equals the change in position divided by 5, and that's going to give me 55 meters. Now, if the cyclist is 72 meters from the front of the ferry, how long before she goes off the front of the boat, assuming she doesn't hit the espresso stand? Well, what we're really getting at here is her motion on the boat, since she and the boat, or since she uh, and the end of the boat are the same moving thing, the boat, we could ignore the motion of the boat. This doesn't matter. It would take her the same time to bike across the surface of the boat, whether the boat is in motion or not. So therefore, I'm going to use 6 as her velocity. I know it's a little confusing, but it's also kind of cool. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say her velocity in this case is 6. Her distance is 72. That's how much she's going to uh, displace herself. And I want to know what the time is. So I'm going to do the old Samson swap to make this easy for me. So what that gives me is, uh, I'm going to say, T equals 72 over 6. And 72 divided by 6 turns out to be 12 seconds. This next one tends to confuse kids a little bit. What I've got here is I've got two cars, oh, I've got two cars coming at each other. Here's one car, and here's another car. Don't worry if you can't draw cars as well as I do. Let's label their velocity. Okay, the distance between them. 320 meters. Now, one car is going 7 meters per second this way, eastwards, and one of them is going 9 meters per second, let's make it westward, and there's a bee flying in between them, and the bee is flying at 21 meters per second. And we're going to let the bee go both directions. So the bee is going to basically fly, touch this car, touch that car, and keep doing that until they crash. So if the uh, how far will the bee get before it's crunched between the colliding cars? So in this case, I want to know the change in uh, I want to know the distance the bee flies. Actually, not the change, not not its displacement, but the distance it travels. That's how far. And so uh, basically, what I'm going to do is this. I need to use this equation. I need to say that uh, the speed of the bee equals the distance it travels by, divided by the time it travels. Now I know what speed the bee travels at. It travels at 21. So I'm going to say 21 equals the distance it travels divided by the time it travels. But I don't know the time it travels, so I'm going to have to figure that out using velocity vectors. Uh, since these two cars are on a collision course coming at each other, uh, I'm going to add these two together. And I know this is a little bit difficult for kids, but the way I think of it is, uh, if this car stopped, this car be approaching it at 9. When this car starts going, it makes the collision happen faster, doesn't it? It would happen sooner, therefore I should add them together. We have a faster velocity towards each other. So uh, 7 plus 9 is 16. So I'm going to say, well, what I've got here is this. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got to switch this. So the net velocity is 16. The distance between the two cars is 320 meters, and I want to know how long the bee flies for. So I'm going to do my swap, and so I'm going to end up saying 320 divided by 16, and when I do that, I'll get T equals, got to use my calculator, and that's 20 seconds. So since the cars are going to collide in 20 seconds, the bee is going to get squished in 20 seconds, so I can now take 20 seconds and put it over here. So what I have now is the bee flies at 21 meters per second, and it does it for a total of 20 seconds. Uh, and now I multiply both sides by 20. And 20 times 21 gives me 420 meters is how far that bug flies before it gets squished. Let's keep going then. Oh, look at this artwork I've done the next time. I'm so proud. Look at that beautiful, beautiful diagram. Did I really do that on a computer? Okay, here you go. What is the man's velocity, velocity relative to the helicopter? So let's see. So what we've got here is this. The helicopter is moving forward at 2 meters per second. The train is moving forward at 
eight. So if you think about it, the train, if the man stopped, the train would carry him this way. The helicopter would be pursuing him, but the train is basically going to work against their motion. Uh, and and so I'm going to take eight. Basically, here's how I'm going to solve this for me personally. I'll do it this way. I'd say I'm going to start with the man. Okay, the man is running at 11, and since the helicopter is on a collision course with him, if you think about it, he's running this way and the helicopter's running that way, I'm going to add those two together because they're working with each other. But the train is carrying the man away from the helicopter and working against him, so I'm going to make that negative, minus 8. So when I add all that together, what I end up getting is 11 plus 2 is 13 minus 8. That gives me 5 meters per second towards the helicopter. So he's going this way. We can call it east if we want to, I guess. What is the man's velocity relative to the train? Well, since he and the train, you know, he's on the train, I can ignore the motion of the train. It's just simply 11. So if I ask how fast he's approaching the conductor of the train, you know, who's standing on the train, it would be 11 meters per second. How long will it take him to reach the back of the train? Well, now let's look at this. So that I'm looking for uh, a time now. And so his distance to the back of the train is 95 meters. So I'm going to use... Uh, and since we're going in a, a, a fixed direction, one direction only, I can basically use the speed equation. So I'm going to say is speed equals distance over time. And his speed relative to the back of the train is 11 meters per second. And the distance is 95 meters to the back of the train. So how long will that take? I'm going to do the swap. So I'm going to say 95 divided by 11. And when I do that, I get 8.6 seconds. How long will it take him to reach the helicopter? Well, in this case now, I have to use this net velocity we came up with. He is approaching the helicopter at 5 meters per second because the helicopter is not on the train, in which case I have to take the, 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 the train's motion into account. Uh, and so that I get a net velocity of 5 meters per second towards the helicopter. So therefore, I'm going to say... Uh, his velocity is 5, and the distance is 62, and therefore when I swap the 5 and the t, I'll get 62 divided by 5, that's going to give me 12.4. So answer here, yeah, where I'm going to squeeze it in, is 12.4 seconds. Let me box that off so I don't lose that one. So here's the deal, guys. It would take the man 12.4 seconds to reach the helicopter and safety. However, it's only going to take him 8.6 seconds to run off the back of the train. This poor man is going to run off the back of the train, and the back of the train is going to be somewhere like here when that happens. So the answer is not. He is not going to make it there. You know how Samson is. He's a sick, sick man. All right, look at this artwork, huh? How do you like that? So now what we've got is... What is the person's velocity relative to balloon? Well, let's just think about it. Let's start with the person. The person has a velocity of 3 towards the balloon. The balloon is coming at him, so it's a collision. So I'm going to say plus 11 because they're colliding with each other. The boat, if you notice, the boat is helping him get to the balloon, so I'm going to add that as well. However, that river is working against the dude and it's carrying the boat and the man the opposite direction, slowing down it, so I'm going to uh, subtract 4 from this. So, what does that give me? That gives me 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 6 is 20, 20 minus 4 gives me a net velocity towards the balloon of 16 meters per second. How far away from the balloon will the person be in 5 seconds? Alright, well let's just see. If, if, if uh, we're approaching the balloon at 16 meters per second and we're 100 meters away, uh, what I'm going to say is 16 meters per second equals uh, delta x over and 5. So I have to multiply both sides by 5. So 5 times 16, let's see what that equals. 5 times 16 equals 80. All right, so the change in position between the man and the balloon is going to equal 80 meters. But remember, he is 100 meters away. 
So basically, he's moved 80 meters closer, so he's here, and the balloon's here, so he's 20 meters apart from it. So the answer isn't 80. In this case, the answer is actually 20 meters. Basically, 100 minus 80. I love this stuff. I, I know it's a little bit confusing, but be patient with yourself. I won't give you killer ones on the test, but I just want you to, to try to get yourself in, in, a, in a, the, the mode of thinking this way.